Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm playing around in the art journal and I'm going to create this page. But I got to tell you, this page was quite an adventure. And along the way, there are two things that became very clear. One is I should never, ever, under any circumstance, be a cosmetic surgeon. And two, weird messages show up sometimes in your art journal. Now, this page, uh, feel free to laugh at me while I'm doing this. You don't have to just laugh with me, but you can actually laugh at me for part of this stuff because it got a little ridiculous. So here's how this art journal page came to be. I opened up my art journal and this is the page that I landed on. And I thought I was gonna do a bunch of rubber stamping on this. But once I looked at it, I realized I see this kind of queen or regal figure over on the right side. And I thought, well, heck, let's draw. If I see her, let's bring her to life. <laughs> Little does this poor queen know what she's in for. Now, I started out giving her an outline here with a Stabilo pencil. And it just wasn't standing out the way I wanted it to. So, if a Stabilo pencil doesn't work, then by golly, I'm going to bring in the paint. Now, it took me a minute before I started this to find the paintbrush to use for this. Now, I have a whole big container of paintbrushes next to me, but I couldn't find the one that had, was a liner brush that basically was designed for doing this kind of thing. And I realized, you know what? If I can't find that brush easily, then by golly, just pick a different one. Because after all, the best art supply to use is the one you can either actually find or the one that's within arm's reach. Now, I'm about to start working on her face here, and her face, well, it's going to go through a lot in this video, and it's not all going to be human, so be prepared for that. Right now, she's got a little bit of a side turn there. Maybe she's turned looking over to the other side of the page, but never fear, that's going to change before this is all done. Now, she does have some blue hair happening there, and it's a big, solid area blue, so I want to create the look of hair there, so naturally, I would start writing words in there because that'll make it look like hair, right? <laughs> and I'm going to do some scribble, journeying, scribble journaling there of what's going through my mind. And by the way, it's as jumbled there in the scribble journaling as I was just tongue-tied a moment ago. It's all over the place. And that's the thing about scribble journaling. You can put whatever you want in there, whatever you need to get out. So I've got some thoughts that I'm putting down there, the flashing back to when I had blue hair in high school, all the way to something about my first job and the fact that I need to do laundry. Like I said, it's all jumbled. Now, if I've got that queen over there with that crown, she's going to need a kingdom. So I'm going to come in with these masks from a stencil that I created called Once Upon a Time. And the nice thing that I love about using masks is that you can really mess around with them and get them situated just the way you want before you commit with the paint. Some people, and we can call them wise people, use a little bit of repositionable tape down on the bottom of the mask to hold it in place. That might have been a wise choice for me to do here, but you know, hey, I'm just going to live on the edge here. I'm holding them in place with my fingers, and you can see that sometimes things are moving, and if that happens, all you do is put them back in place. Now, nothing about this art journal page is super precise and perfect. So if there's a little bit of wiggle here, a little bit of this and that, not going to bother me one bit. Because by golly, I saved a good, what, 20, 30 seconds of my life by not putting that tape on there. I'm using a cosmetic sponge here to apply the black paint. And it's one of those wedge sponges from any old drugstore. And I'm starting over here on the side with the towers and the castle parts because <laughs> I don't want to face the reality that's waiting for me on the other page. You see, I was okay covering up all the background over here where the towers were, but around her, I was on the fence. Do I cover up around her or do I not? And by the time I actually got over there, I realized, yep, I'm going to cover it up. So I cover up most of it, except when I get to right around her nose. You see, my spidey sense was totally tingling and telling me that there's gonna be a problem here. I wanted to keep the pink, but the pink didn't look right while it was there. So I decided, let's live on the edge. Let's take a risk, throw caution to the wind, and let's cover up that pink. And wow, can I just say that was not the right choice for me. Yep, nope, I missed that pink. I really wanted that pink to come back. So, if something like that happens, what can you do? Well, that's what baby wipes were invented for. Okay, maybe baby wipes weren't really invented to help with paint, but they work really well for it. 
So now I've got a bunch of that pink back, and now all it looks like to me is a big cloud of halitosis around her face. So now I'm stuck. I want the pink, and I don't want the pink. So I'm just gonna keep myself busy by touching up the black here and there while I come to terms with the decision that I know I have to make, but I wish there was some other solution because the halitosis thing, it's just not doing it for me. I really need to make that go away. Now I had to speed up the camera here as I was doing the editing because of how long it took me to actually get that pink covered up because I really didn't want to cover it up and I really wanted to cover it up. I even brought in that baby wipe again thinking maybe, but no, no, the pink has got to go. No matter what, it's just not gonna work. So now she needs a face. So I thought, hey, let me cut her an eyeball out of a gel print. And I made her into a cyclops. That is a giant eyeball for the size of her head. But I trimmed it down and got the size to something I was a little happier with. Well, now that we've got an eyeball, we need a nose. So I grabbed another piece of a gel print and I thought, hey, I'll just cut her a quick nose. When I put this thing on there, all I could think of was Mr. Potato Head. I made a Mr. Potato Head nose for her. And frankly, with that whole one eye thing, it almost looks like a Pablo Picasso kind of Mr. Potato Head going on. So I kept trimming it up, trying to make it something besides that. And I ended up with a bird beak. Yep, I've got a beak on her now. But I thought, well, this isn't quite right for a beak, so I thought I'd trim it up a little bit, give it a little bit more of a point to the end of it. I mean, shouldn't a beak have a nice point to it? And I realized maybe it's a little small. Maybe I need a bigger beak. So rather than just taking this beak the way it was, nope, I'm going to get another piece of paper and I'm going to build another beak. This thing ends up being huge. It's ginormous. It's like the size of her head. No matter how I trimmed it, no matter what I did to it, yep, that overgrown second beak just wasn't going to work for me. Well, I decided to go back to the dainty beak, the first beak that I made, and make the big commitment to actually glue this stuff down. A spoiler alert, that was an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly, because wow, did I not like how this looked. But suddenly I started to think, Maybe this was a queen that had a secret identity as a bird. And so, yeah, I decided she needed to keep her secret identity secret. So a little black paint covered that beak right up. Let's just say I thought my muse was stretching it quite a bit with this whole secret identity of a bird queen kind of thing. But whatever, we got here now. So we've taken care of the beak issue. Now we just need to get a couple of eyes for it instead of just one, which then led to the whole nose and mouth problem. Now, have you ever seen a five or six year old try and put makeup on like their mom? That's pretty much how I felt creating the nose and mouth for her. It just was awkward. It didn't seem to be going well. And it seemed like I was just kind of missing the mark over and over again. But eventually I figured out, hey, instead of using a paintbrush, try something else. So I grabbed a Marabou art crayon and suddenly the lips turned a corner for me. I started to feel a little bit happier with them. Now the nose, I can't say the same thing for that. That no matter what I did with the nose, I was not happy with it one bit. Yeah, pretty much it was clear to me as I fiddled around with the nose that I should never, ever, ever be a cosmetic surgeon. I probably shouldn't try and write scripts for Hollywood either because, well, some kind of queen that's also a bird and keeps it a secret doesn't really seem like that's going to be the next blockbuster coming out of Hollywood. And one of the nice things about art journaling is you can capture your feelings and your thoughts in the moment on there. And so uh, that's what I'm doing with some scribble journaling here going up the towers. This isn't literary gold. This is just getting those thoughts out. And yeah, I did have an idea or two in there about what might happen to that queen with that secret bird identity. Now, if you're wondering what any of the exact supplies that I've been using in this video are, I've got them all over for you on the blog post that goes with this video over on the website at acolorfuljourney.com. And yep, I'll have a link down below for you. Hey, and by the way, if you're enjoying this video and you want to see more of my stuff, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. 
because I used a very matte black paint, that helps that white pen write really easily on top of it, so I want to keep adding it everywhere. And I'm even putting it on the sides of the window to act kind of like just a little bit of shading happening there. Now, since she's royalty, because, well, anybody that wears a crown is royalty, she needs something regal or formal looking to go on this page. So I thought I'd put some fancy script over on the side. Now I put the stencil on top of her, but notice how you can see where her outline is and where there's the black on the right? I'm only gonna add the stenciling where the black is. I can just see where she's at and I just go right up to the edge of her, but not all the way onto her. And I can also sneak and check on this that when I think I've got it where I want it, I can lift up the stencil and peek and see if it's the way I want. If things aren't quite close enough, I can stencil a little bit closer to her. The stencil that I'm using is called Rembrandt's Words, and it's another one that I designed for over at Stencil Girl Products. Now, is this page completely finished to me yet? Nope, there's still something else that it needs, but I'm not completely sure what it is. So I'm gonna step away from it for a little while and let my muse tell me what it needs to become next. And you bet when I add more to this, I'll be sharing it and letting you know what happens. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. And if you'd like to see more of what I'm up to, head on over to the website at acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.